hello and welcome to this week's angling blog in this vlog we're going to announce the competition winner for the 10 kilo of hemp or hemp and tares and also we've got a bit of chub fishing from a session that hasn't been featured on the blog before first of all i'd like just to say i hope all your families are well and you're doing okay on lockdown i'm not finding it too difficult and thank you to all the people that have enjoyed the last two videos on the barbel fishing and the pike fishing basics i look forward to seeing how you guys get on to the guys who are trying it for the first time when we get out of lockdown so earlier this week the competition come to an end and i jumped on a website to pick the winner so best of luck all and i'll play that bit of film now right so the competition to win 10 kilo of hemp or hemp and tares has ended i've put the url into a random winner generator online and it's come up with 61 unique entries so best of luck all so let's see who the winner is phil billsborough and he's going to use the hemp if he won he'll be using the hemp with small pellets for feed for the river prince a day for days can't wait to be on the bank again and stay safe well done, Phil, and I'm sure everyone on the channel will give you a big thumbs up and congratulations. So well done to Phil on winning the competition. If you get in touch via PM on Facebook or through YouTube and let me know what you want for the prize and when you want it delivered, that will be fantastic. And I'm sure all the people in the comments below will be wishing you well and congratulations on winning the competition. So the fishing on the channel this week is a short video on chub fishing. Around the time I was doing a lot of barbel fishing on the River Severn and this footage just didn't get used. So we hope you enjoyed this short vlog on the channel. It passes the time on lockdown. And again, thank you all for the support on the channel. If you're new around here, it'd be great if you could subscribe or leave the video a like. And I'll catch you all next week. Stay safe. Hello and welcome to this week's Agnin Blog. Today, you join me on a super short session on a Sunday and we're in search of chub. So as you can see on screen now, travelling super light today, I've literally got my rod, my hold all, a landing net and a bank stick. So there's two ways of approaching chub in my opinion. Number one is to sit on the swim with a keep net and try and catch the whole shoal during the course of a day. If you don't lose any fish, you can catch quite a lot of chub from quite a short run and you will catch the whole shoal during the day. They'll spook and come back in and spook and come back in. Today is a different approach. We're going to try and catch one or two from each swim and then move on. Hopefully we can get one or two on the bank and get back for Sunday dinner. I'm in the first swim of the day, but I have walked along the stretch and put a bit of hemp in a few likely looking spots just to bait up them swims before I arrive in them and give them a go. We're back in swim number one and let's have a look at the setup that we're going to use today. So setup for the session is my Corbin twin tip rod and I've got a Corum Shadow Reel loaded with six pound line. It won't be staying into dark today, but you may notice that I've still got a starlight on the end of the rod, and that's because it was out on the River Seven yesterday. And we'll have a look at that later on in the video how we got on there. So down to the business end of the rig, I've got a Corum free running run ring in XL, a Dinsmore's flat pair. It's only one ounce, but with a bigger surface area, it'll allow me to hold bottom on this river. I've got a bead, to protect the knot, okay, the run ring can't go over that. A quick change swivel, and then I've got a sleeve to, you know, aid separation on the cast to prevent tangles. Four pound line, and to a Corum size 16 expert hook, and I've got a banded Sonia bait, spicy sausage, six mil pellet on the hook. You will notice that the pellet is as tight to the hook as you can possibly get it. And that's because chub are masters at just mouthing the bait. Ideally, when I come chub fishing, I don't mind using maggots and stuff like that. Baits that are on the hook, because you get better hooking for chub doing that. But only targeting one or two chub, there's dace and there's trouts and there's all types in this river. So I want to target them chub and a pellet will help me eliminate the roach and all that and get to them chub. So let's make a cast. So now we're in the first swim of the day. I am being quiet because we are right on top of the fish. As you can see, it's a bit jungle warfare. Put some hemp and pellets just down here. 
earlier I've seen one or two chub down here have snook into position it's time to make a cast I imagine the chub being that dark water down there the rod vest nice and low because to say it is jungle warfare we've got trees above our heads and everything but let's see if we can get one so just into the first one of the day nice little chub and say keeping quiet is the key here we go the first chub of the day didn't take too long at all in swims like this you've got to stay quiet sneak in just drip feed that hemp and a few pellets in and they'll find it and that is a great start what we're going to do with this little guy is we're going to put him in the landing net in the edge it's nice and near to the bank here and we'll put him in there while we have another cast if we've got any chance of another one this guy can stay in the net for the bit because if you put him straight back he's going to go straight into the shoal and spook them so a big landing net and close to the water he'll be fine down there while we make another cast and see if we can get another one out and like i said earlier one species that is in this river is the dace and i love myself for dace just shows how all species eat them pellets an unnatural food but they all see it as something that they can eat it's a lo lovely little dace let's get it straight back just a little bit of hemp which is going to go underneath that tree you know give the fish some food where the hat where they're happy and confident and then the maggots upstream so they're falling before the tree and that way they'll start coming up and out for you so when you're on the river there's loads of things to look at wildlife everywhere kingfishers the lot just putting your finger over the line like that you can look around as much as you want and admire the scenery you get a bite you'll get an unmistakable thud on the rod but more unmistakable is that line pulling tight on your finger it's a great way to enjoy the river and still be you know hitting them bites so that first swim produced one chub and a dace and I lost trout and the tip's gone round straight away bit of a change in this swim decided to try a bunch of maggots on the hook and it's a fantastic bait is maggots for impact especially with chub they just can't resist maggots so when they arrived I put a couple of handfuls in the swim and then made a cast with a bunch on the hook and there's chub number two just a few hours today to wet a line like I said and we've managed to get two on the bank so far one from each swim again I'm going to rest him in the margin and keep him in the net for a bit and we'll make another cast and see if we can get one but before that the start of the video I mentioned about the River Seven so let's have a look at last night's session and how we got on that was on the river seven a nice evening with my uncle back onto the river on today's session and we're in a fast paced swim with a bit of a slack on the other side and when you come into this type of water you'd almost certainly run into mr trout and that's what we've hooked here they flap around all over your swim 
and hopefully won't have disturbed the chub too much. And what a beautiful fish the trout is. Lovely spots. And they don't half put up a scrap, but they don't half ruin your chub swim. I've seen some decent sized trees on my travels. I don't know what type of tree it is, but look at the size of that. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. Jesus, that is one hell of a tree. If anyone knows what type it is, put it in the comments below, but that is easily probably the tallest tree I've ever seen in my life and I wouldn't like to be beneath it in a strong wind like. But yeah, one hell of a tree. Well, that brings us to the end of the session. Like I said, it's only a short one. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the bit of fishing and the, the hints and tips in the blog with you know where to target on the river and a simple rig you know to fish it but yeah just a little insight into the type of fishing that I do away from the blog where I'll just nip out with a rod for a few hours and do a bit of fishing I hope you enjoyed the blog tight lines in your own fishing and I'll catch us all next week tight lines